Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Throughout the years of filming Wild Kingdom, we were faced with the grim reality of extinction of some animal species. In the early 60s and 70s, animals were negatively impacted by the loss of habitat and the use of a chemical insecticide known as DDT. Today, DDT has been banned in the United States, and we've made great strides to preserve wide open spaces where animals can thrive. Wild Kingdom made a direct impact on modern captive breeding and release programs, and we're now seeing a positive comeback from many species. We must all do our part to continue this progress to protect all animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. W.K. here isn't really brushing up on his monkey business. The partnership this book refers to is one that sometimes occurs in the Wild Kingdom among animals that learn to work together, to cooperate with each other for mutual gain. There are many such partnerships. For example, tick birds, and cattle egrets may team up with an African rhinoceros eating insects infesting his thick skin. They get a meal and he gets a clean hide. The birds also provide a built-in alarm system for the nearsighted rhino. And this little Spanish hogfish darts without fear into the mouth of the savage barracuda, cleaning the menacing teeth. And this little fellow is just what his name says, a honey guide. His call directs the rat tail to a honey tree, where they both enjoy a feast once the hive is opened by the rat tail. But one of the most remarkable examples of animal cooperation I've ever seen took place in a beautiful valley in southern Utah. In this valley live four families. A family of coyotes, bobcats, eagles, and badgers. Three of these animals form perhaps the strangest partnership of all. The story is right here in W.K.'s book. The coyotes howl ricochets along the rocky walls of the winding valley. His call, a claim to territory, answered only by echoes from the towering cliffs. This is his valley, but not his alone. As he serenades the morning sun, an eagle flies from a lofty eyrie, and a bobcat picks her way with careful cat feet, moving down a stony bluff to the valley floor below, where the predators find their prey. And under the valley floor lives one of the fiercest predators of all, a badger, fiercer now with hunting lean in these early summer weeks. But the bobcat has struck swiftly today. The hungry badger decides on a closer look at the bobcat's catch. With her short stubby legs, she seldom captures game fleet as the jackrabbit. gives up without protest. Hunting high above, the golden eagle glides to earth. With game scarce, she too has focused on the rabbit.
Cautiously staying just out of reach, the great bird of prey watches closely with aristocratic bearing, awaiting the moment to attack. The badger digs in for action. The eagle must move now. Those talons are deadly, a fearsome weapon. But the courageous badger will not give up her catch. As abruptly as it began, the battle ends. As the eagle returns to its soaring search, the mother badger moves to her young, the reason for her savage determination. Once more, the eagle's keen eyes search the valley for game. Beneath her, the bobcat climbs back to a den far up the rocky cliffside, carrying another catch. A superb hunter, she's captured a ground squirrel. Leaving it, she'll return to the hunt, for she too has young to feed. This is the season of renewal, when the young are born and the parents must provide, when valley families compete for food, for survival. Till her kittens are old enough to go with her down the rocky hillside, she must catch enough for them all. The eagle watches intently. The kittens could offer no defense for her powerful piercing talons. But it's too late. The kittens crawl back to the dark safety of their den. The eagle flies on to scrutinize another successful hunter climbing from the valley to his waiting family. While the pups continue their noisy squabble, the eagle approaches. And just as one pup claims the catch as its own, she arrives. This time she doesn't hesitate. The catch is defended only by the pup. Young coyotes are persistent, but calling for help is about all they can do. They're no match for the stabbing talons. The last defender retreats to safety, but one brave pup returns, retrieving part of the camp. The eagle leaves with the stolen prey. Soaring once more to the high, lonely cliffs, she carries her catch to three expectant eaglets. In their enormous nest, the vicious predator becomes a gentle, patient parent, carefully feeding her young. The day's hunting ends, a day of fierce competition between animals, with still no indication of the partnership to come. The young animals grew, and some of them started to explore their valley home. But no sign of a partnership had yet appeared, as they slowly began to adopt the skills their parents taught them. It is midsummer now, and in their lonely eyrie, the young eagles have yet to master the art of flying. They're bound to their rocky ledge, high above the valley floor, alive with the excited yelps of coyote pups out for a hunting lesson. 
either parent may lead these expeditions. They're a loyal pair who may mate for life. Today, father guides the pups through his territory. His problem is holding their attention long enough to teach them anything. He quickly returns his sidetracked hunters to the trail of a hen pheasant, cautious and crafty in avoiding the valley predators. But she too has young. To survive, they must quickly learn the skills of evasion. Her example is simple and urgent, and as she moves into cover, her chicks follow. Then a careless movement in the tall grass, and the sudden stirring gives the chick away. Today it escapes, and once more the pups are in need of a reminder. As father walks back to gather his brood, a slight movement attracts his attention. Now the pups get the idea. They too search the tall grass for signs of life. But the inexperienced pups quickly lose heart as the little chicks elude them. Back on the hunt, the father coyote is drawn to a tiny movement near a log. And again, the pups follow his patient example. He's trapped his prey near the end of the fallen tree. And as the pups draw near, he lifts a field mouse from the grass. It looks easy, but so did the pheasant. And there's so much to investigate in the valley. A mouse moves almost right under his nose. A hunter again. But the darting mouse is too well hidden by the brush, and the pup quickly loses it. He searches for the trembling grass the mouse leaves in its wake. Then the mouse flashes through a clearing. Not far away, the mother bobcat and her kittens explore their valley home. For all the young animals, this period of instruction is critical. Their parents must pass on the many skills they need to hunt successfully. Nearby, in a little pond, a mallard duck raises her family. Their lesson is avoiding capture. The pond is a favorite playground of the coyotes. The ducklings almost run over the surface as they dash into the water and paddle to safety. Left on the bank, the pups finally admit defeat, and mother duck herds her family out of harm's way. Now the bobcat slinks to the pond, demonstrating a proper stalk to her kittens. But their wet feet concerns the kittens more and the ducks are well warned by their clumsy approach. The young bobcats learn a valuable lesson about stealth, and the ducklings discover the defensive importance of their little pond. Mother makes one last attempt, but the half-submerged log is an unsteady bridge. The ducks stay a safe distance away, and the cats give up the hunt. Hardly the example mother would like to set for her kittens, but she'll look for other prey to continue her lessons. 
Suddenly, she tenses. A young bear, wandering from his mother, approaches the family. The bobcat would avoid him ordinarily, but now her defenseless kittens are threatened, far from their protective den. She stalks to meet the challenge. Thick neck and heavy hide dull the bobcat's attack, but she continues to battle. But now the cub's mother appears, following the trail of her young. The odds will soon be too great even for the fearless bobcat. The bear is almost on them. Bobcat retreats. Now to gather her brood and leave the pond to the bears. High above them, the young eagles see the conflict unfold. Still bound to their narrow ledge, they watch with darting eyes, unable to leave their rocky prison. But soon they too will hunt in the valley below. The young bobcats, coyotes, badgers, and eagles began to fend for themselves as full-fledged hunters, and they often encountered one another as they roamed through the valley. But none of their meetings showed any sign of cooperation or the formation of a partnership. <laughs> Fully feathered now, the young eagles sit like statues in their windswept eyrie, surveying the valley below. A spread of his seven-foot wings and one soars into the rising currents reflected upward by the steep cliffs. A young badger, almost adult, leaves the burrow to join his brother. Now in late summer, they are already skillful hunters. Soon they will leave this home to dig burrows of their own. Not far away, a young bobcat hunts with all the deadly grace of his mother. The badgers, moving in and out of their burrow, attract the cat's attention. They spot him and quickly move to the protection of the tunnel. But a noiseless approach from the rear fools the badgers into thinking the way is clear. The cat coils for the leap. Badger holds his ground with all the great courage of his kind. Finally, help arrives. The cub is shaken, but not injured. And the family searches for a quieter neighborhood as the bobcat returns to his hunt. The family often takes refuge in an old burrow, but even this neighborhood offers no improvement. One of the curious young coyotes moves in for a closer look at the newcomer. The coyote soon gets the idea that he's not wanted, but with a brother along for protection, he can't resist another peek. After their encounter with a bobcat, the badgers are in no mood for visitors. The young badger soon realizes that the coyote poses no real threat. Near a favorite hunting area, he decides to continue on in search of prey. The coyote follows, knowing that if the badger finds game, he may too. Hunting above without success, the eagle notices the activity and comes down for a closer look. 
And now, with these young animals testing their new hunting skills, there is no hint of conflicts. Inspecting the soil for signs of the rodents he feeds on, the badger patiently works his way over the ground, moving toward an area where he earlier discovered a nest of ground squirrels. The young coyote follows at a safe distance. Like all badgers, he frequently returns to previous diggings. The eagle has seen the badger hunt before and knows what happens now. If the ground squirrels that escaped his last excavation of the nest have returned, he'll soon find them. But the badger is not used to working with an audience. Finally, he returns to his digging. He hunts not with stealth or speed, but with a simple, deadly technique. He digs faster than his prey can dig away from him. The eagle waits, ready for action, if the badger finds what he's looking for. Digging with incredible speed, he tunnels into the nest. Still no results. The self-appointed partners tensely wait. There it is. A squirrel dashes for freedom and escapes. The coyote sees it too late. But now he spotted the hidden exit tunnel. Another squirrel pops up for a look as the badger nears the nest. There it goes. And he has it. The eagle is swift and sure. Finally, the badger gets his chance. Each of the predators has made a catch, and the partnership is formed. In weeks to come, these animals may perfect the technique of hunting together, cooperating with each other for mutual advantage. A badger, a young coyote, and a golden eagle. Together in a wild, remote valley, they form a strange hunting partnership. Soon, some of the young animals will roam beyond the cliff to claim new territories and to test their new skills. For three animals, the fading summer has brought a valuable lesson they taught themselves. And a strange partnership begins. The badger, coyote, and golden eagle continued their hunting partnership. And by the time summer shadows lengthened toward winter, they had become even more skillful at working together. In a valley that had known nothing but fierce competition among species, these animals not only lived together in peaceful harmony, but actually cooperated with one another to the mutual advantage of all. Their partnership made them even more effective as hunters. And as the seasons pass, this skill too may be passed on to their young when they grow to take their place in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? 
Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.